Hello, everyone. My name is Robert. I'm an engineering manager at ClickHouse. And I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about the amazing progress we made with joins in ClickHouse. Most people who regularly work with SQL will know what joins are. For everyone else, I'd like to start with an example that demonstrates why joins are so important. Let's say you are responsible for running the data warehouse of a stockbroker. What you will typically have is a huge table that contains all the transactions of your clients. As, <clears throat> as you can see, the table contains for every transaction a timestamp, the client's first and last name, the stock ticker symbol, the action like buying and, or selling a stock or dividend payout, the amount and the price or the dividend. If you look closely, you'll notice that many values occur more than once in the data. For instance, the first name column contains Mark three times, Jennifer two times, and so on. In the database world, we have a fancy word for that. We say the data contains redundancies. Now, I will say having redundancies in the data is generally not a great thing. Think about it. The more redundancies you have, the higher your storage consumption will be and the higher your storage costs as well. But there are two even more subtle problems. First, if you limit yourself to a single effect table, your ETL pipelines tend to become more complex because they need to combine data from different sources into the single table. Second, there could be new use cases which you did not anticipate when you designed the table schema. So maybe you like to keep track of all the customers that have a premium status because they trade so much. And unless you store these customers in a separate table, you will have a hard time modeling that with just a single table. A more natural way to model the data is to use as a star schema or a snowflake schema. The redundant values in the fact table will be replaced by foreign keys, which point to dimension tables. This solves our three problems, but it requires that the database provides fast joins, right? Now, I will say that ClickHouse had great support for different join flavors for a long time already. You can use inner, left, right, full, outer, ace of joins, all, any, semi, anti joins, thicknesses, equi and non equi join predicates, hash sort merge, direct join algorithms, in memory, and dispilling joins. What we did in the past six months was to optimize, was to optimize the join function functionality that's most commonly used in practice. And I want to talk about three specific areas that we improved. The first area is around the most commonly used join algorithm, so-called hash joins. This slide shows how the algorithm works. There are two phases. In the first phase, the build phase, the algorithm iterates the write table, and for every row, it inserts the row's hash value into a hash table. In the second phase, the probe phase, the algorithm iterates the left table, and it checks if the hash, ta if the hash table contains the current row's hash value already. As you can see, the probe phase is fully parallelized, but the build phase isn't. The reason for that is a very fundamental dilemma that we have in computer science. You can have multiple threads reading data like the hash table concurrently, but if you try to write data at the same location from multiple writers, you'll end up with chaos. The only way to avoid that is to use single threading, and that makes everything pretty slow. We optimized the hash join algorithm such that the build phase is now also fully parallelized. The way this works conceptually is that the single big hash table is now split into multiple smaller ones. It's still true that in the build phase, only one, th only one thread can write a hash table at a time, but the restriction applies to each of the hash tables individually. In other words, as the number of hash tables goes up, the number of writers can go up as well. And suddenly the build phase becomes multi-threaded as well, just like we wanted. The second area of improvements is around join reordering. Let's say you like to run the select statement in the top right corner, which joins three tables, A, B, and C. This slide shows how ClickHouse joins the tables in a specific order. So for example, table A is joined with table B, and the result of that gets joined with table C. The thing is that joins are commutative, which is a nerdy way of saying that we can switch the build and the probe sites, and the result will be the same. So let's just look at the join between A and B in the gray box. We could switch A and B, and the select would return the same rows. 
we could also switch the sides in the top level join if you wanted to, and it would still be the same result. Switching sides allows us to minimize the sizes of the hash tables. Smaller hash tables mean better cache efficiency, which means more performance. We, implement, we implemented a simple heuristics which moves the smaller of both tables to the right side, to the build side, and that works pretty well. Joins are not only commutative, they are also associative. This goes one step further. It means we can join the tables in an arbitrary order without affecting the result correctness. For example, we could join A and B first and then C, or we could join B and C first and then A, or we could join A and C first and then B. Finding the best order of all the joins in a query is actually a much harder problem than switching sides. But if you get it right, you can bring down the runtimes of joins by orders of magnitude, potentially. So to be able to do this, we needed to rework the join infrastructure in ClickHouse significantly, and that is done by now. The actual join reordering is still working progress, but expected to land in the first version soon. The third category of improvements are a back of more careful, um, specialized optimizations. Without going into details here, I will only say that ClickHouse now tries harder to push down filters past joins. We got rid of some unnecessary lock contention beyond the improvements for parallel hash joins that I showed on the previous slide. And finally, there are now even optimizer rules which try to eliminate joins from the query plan if that is possible. The big question, of course, is if all of that was worth the trouble. This slide shows the runtimes of the 22 TPCH queries, which is a popular database benchmark that is dominated by joint performance. For this experiment, I used a server with 32 cores, as well as 64 gigabyte of main memory and a TPCH scale factor of 100, which translates to a fact table size of 600 million rows. The blue bars show how long each of the queries ran in ClickHouse version 24.10, which is half a year old. As you can see, lots of queries exceed the maximum runtime of the diagram, which is capped at 15 seconds. Query four threw an out-of-memory exception. Queries um, eight, nine, and 19 ran longer than 300 seconds, five minutes. After that, I canceled them. Um, and queries 20 to 22 didn't run at all because they use a special feature of SQL called correlated subqueries, and that wasn't implemented at that point. Actually, there there were four more queries which use correlated subqueries. I decorrelated them by hand as far as that was easily possible. Now let's switch forward to the day. In ClickHouse 25.5, the situation is a lot better. The average speed up across all the queries is an impressive 20.7x. Many queries now run dramatically faster. For instance, query 10 went from 23 seconds to just three seconds. Query 19 didn't even complete before. Now it runs in 1.5 seconds. ClickHouse now also has experimental support for correlated subqueries, meaning that queries 20 to 22 run as well. Almost, except for the out of memory exception query 21, but we're working on that. I mentioned that global join reorderings work in progress and expected to land in the first version soon. To understand how much it can speed up queries, I reordered the joined tables in all the queries by hand. So I basically did manually what the optimizer will do in future automatically. And these are the yellow bars. The speed up across all the queries compared to 24.10 was 45x. Again, that's a pretty impressive improvement over the status quo. To summarize, joins became significantly faster in recent ClickHouse versions compared to half a year ago. And we are dedicated to improve the performance of joins even further. With that, I'd like to close and hand over to my colleague, Melvin, who has some exciting news to share about data lake support in ClickHouse. Thank you.